Good everyone and welcome to today's video and today it's a spade review on the i16 type 10 obviously the Chinese one um obviously I have done this thing in a video quite a while back um it was when one of my friends um said about the um, Spanish Civil War and I took the plane out just for a bit of a laugh and a bit of a break from the constant retardation and I got I think it was six kills unfortunately there was no kill streaks like that in this flight well in the whole spade really um i think my highest kill tally was th no it was four and that was in the final flight that i needed to spade it where i met a stat padder in a mig three but i'm not going to show the four kill battle it it was a bit of a bit of a cost of fuck really the one flight that i'm going to show you is my very first flight um but obviously we need to go over the plane first. Obviously the I-16 Type 10 differs from the Type 5 by having two extra machine guns. And well, I'm hiding the wings because it can also carry rockets. Obviously if you've seen the Type 10 video that I did a while back, um, that also had the rockets. I loaded up the RS-82s well, RS at the start and then I went to the RBS to do some ground padding. Turns out there was a Condor and I thought, oh fuck okay, it, I'll just fire the rockets and I got a rocket kill, which is always nice. But, this plane has really good performance. Obviously, it's pretty much the same as a Type 5. I think it's got a better engine, if I remember rightly. Um, and the armament has been upgraded from two machine guns to four. Obviously, they're all Shikas. They are ridiculous. I love the Shikas machine guns. They are perfect guns for their battle rating. And, well, you've got two wing mounted with a total of 80 dungeon rounds, which... Well, the fire rate's 800 rounds a minute, so that gives you an idea. And you get 650 in the nose guns. So your, your nose guns will run out first, then your wings. I have, um, well in this battle, I think the nose guns run out, if I remember rightly. Um, then the, the, the wing guns come close to running out. Obviously, this battle that I'm going to show you was the first flight, so I had no belt upgrades, no engine upgrades, no nothing. But I made the plane work reasonably well. So let's have a look, shall we? Obviously, I've named the replay more darker because everyone loves a bit darker, don't they? But um, yeah, so I like the plane. Like, um, I've always liked the I-16s. I've heard rumors about the Type 17 being crap because it has a crap engine. Apparently, I obviously don't own that plane yet, but I just think. I just think like, um, you know, when you hear something and you think, mm, could be true, could it be true, don't know, and you, you're not sure because you haven't actually played with it yourself, That that's my feeling right now about the 17, and I'm hoping the 17's good. So, let's jump right into the battle, obviously, I'm going to skip ahead because there's quite a bit of dead zone. Obviously, very first flight, this thing's not the best at climbing. Same with all the I-16s when they're stuck. And we're fighting the Japanese again. So, that's always nice, isn't it? Obviously, if you've seen the Keats 27 spade review, you would have seen the... Well, you would have seen the actual um, Japanese versus China. We do have a few Russian planes in this game. We have the two Zhukovsky Chaikas. We have a MiG-3 and we have a LAG-3A, who's going to ask a couple of questions in chat. Um, he was about level 30, and he was asking about the lags and stuff like that, saying if they're good planes, they aren't really. They, they get the job done, but they're not that sort of plane that I would go, Oh, I feel in the mood to fly LAG-3A like today. It, it's just not that sort of plane, like... Um, they are a bit of a dog's dinner, as I say in the chat. If you don't know what a dog's dinner is, it's British slang. It's a byword for something being a bit crap. If you don't know what crap means, then call blimey, you are uncultured. <laughs> so, at the moment, a top tier fighter in a H81A2, obviously the premium, that's still need to fly at some point. Um, just not at time because of queue times they take far far too long and I've just sat there for like 20 minutes um, He goes for a D4Y1 which Not very useful to the team is it sir, but I hope 
brain dead people buying premiums. Obviously, stock belts, I'm not expecting to do much to a H6K. But I had to take out one of his gunners, which is always nice. I fire a load of rounds at him, but I'm close to jamming my guns, so I think, okay, I'll leave him. I've done some good damage across the airframe. I've taken out a gunner. That's always nice. At this point, our H81 friend has been bounced by two Key43s on comms. And obviously, these are level 40 odd players, so they're, they're pretty experienced. Didn't know at the time they were squatted until after I looked. Obviously, I had a rough idea they were squatted at this point. But um, I dive in first, and I'm thinking, okay. And top of the tank, you've obviously already seen these screenshots. Because I sent them a couple of screenshots from this battle. And, well, there goes that first key 43. Snap his tail off. First kill. And here comes the second one. He's just down there. Obviously, I've killed his mate, so he's going to be a bit pissed off. We pull into an, a nice little vertical maneuver here. Obviously, I'm using my landing flaps so I can get around just that little bit quicker before him. And I smoke him. Second kill. And, well, the H81 looked like he was going in to steal it there, but... <sighs> Total wanker is all I'll say. That's the second wanker in a video, like... Well, in two different ones. Like, I just don't get the point, like... <laughs> But then um, here's where Ditto Head, obviously the guy in the Lag 3A, um, says, does the Lag 3 have turbocharger? I don't think it does. I don't actually know. I, I don't believe it does. I just say to him, it's a bit of a dog's dinner, I'm afraid. I recommend spading it and moving on. That's, that's all I say. But at this point, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm obviously bone stock. Most of the fighters are dead, for the most part. There are a Key 43 2 and a Key 44 2 high still remaining, which you can see up there. And I was debating what to do. I have a choice between two options at this point. Number one, climbing up to engage him, which is a waste of my time at this point. Because I don't get anything out of it. I don't even get an assist, even though I should have gotten an assist, in my opinion. But that's just me. Um, or go for the ground targets early and have more ammunition. I should have gone for the ground targets personally, because, well, I didn't really benefit anything from climbing and engaging these guys, because the team had it under control. One thing I will say, though, is that I really do like the Chinese roundels on these aircraft. Is I haven't really mentioned them, but I like the Chinese roundels. They're, they're really... They're really nice. Like, they're that sort of rounder that you'd easily recognize if you was in, like, sim. So if you're a sim pilot, you might be able to just tell these things apart. Sim tanks, however, not. They they don't have decals at all. Which is why, if you're going to play a Chinese tank in sim, when obviously the Chinese tanks are fully released, obviously you've got the two for the moment, but obviously they won't be released for a bit, but when they are, it's going to be a lot of team killing in sim, I reckon. Because someone might think you're a Chinese chaffy, and you're not a Chinese chaffy, and the enemy might, well, a guy on the... American side might think a American Chaffee is a Chinese Chaffee and just kill him. Or the other way around, it just works that way unfortunately. Was he going to go for the Key 44, but unfortunately he gets set on fire, so I'm thinking, okay, I'll just turn for him, I'll go for the Key 43. You'll see what I mean why I should get an assist, because I did score hits on the Key 43, I did do some damage, but I just doesn't seem to think I do. I don't know what this Key 43 actually was doing. But, there you go, scored some hits on the engine block, did some good damage, but I don't get the assist, and the H81 comes in to finish it off. Don't get the assist, I break a flap, but that's, that's really it. I don't know why I did that really weird roll maneuver, I honestly don't remember why. I guess you could blame half eight at night after a long day of college brain, if that's even a thing. I put in chat, bone stock I 16 types and decent game for me. At this point, however, anti aircraft fire is coming in. Obviously, I'm going for this convoy. I love going for this convoy. Nowadays, though, it's pretty much a death sentence because, well, you can just see the triple A, the ferocity of the guns. Like, none of them have hit me yet. Keyword. 
but there's no way this should be this should be allowed to be in RRB because I mean my plane's taken oil damage my plane's taken pilot damage and obviously with the match about to end due to the final guy dying um, obviously me answering the guy in chat I haven't got much time for ground padding now but I get enough another vehicle there half track another half track and I get this final hard track here, if I remember right. I think there's one more? Nope, that's it. And that is that. Decent game. This got me two-thirds spaded. Obviously, you can thank the premium time for that. Um, And, well, yeah. I like to type down. Great plane. Great armament. Great rockets. Obviously, I didn't have them in this game. But I don't need rockets to understand how good they are. And, well, it's a good plane. I recommend people get it, spade it. And use it in Grand Forces when obviously the Chinese Grand Forces come available to people who didn't buy into it. Anyway, I'll let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the i16 Type 10, and I'll see you all on the next one.